Newly released images of 3 Eye Atlas confirm a chilling truth. This is no ordinary comet. What once sat quietly in the astronomical catalog as a harmless icy traveler now appears to be something far more mysterious, something that refuses to fit into any familiar label. The dusty tail, the glowing coma, the classic signatures of a comet are absent. Instead, in their place are signs that defy every expectation and spark unsettling questions. Is this just a rogue fragment wandering between the stars? Or could it be a relic, a fragment of technology perhaps, from a civilization long gone? For the first time, scientists are forced to ask questions they never dreamed they'd have to ask. It all began on July 1st, 2025, a night that should have been routine. The Atlas Survey in Chile scans the heavens every evening, recording asteroids, comets, even pieces of space junk that glint with reflected sunlight. Most objects earn a catalog number, vanish into databases, and are quickly forgotten. But then came the calculation. The computers revealed that 3 i Atlas was not crawling across the night sky, but tearing through it at 130,000 miles per hour. With a trajectory so precise, it looked surgical. In an instant, routine ended, and history began. The Atlas telescopes, four robotic sentinels perched high on volcanic peaks in Hawaii, had been faithfully photographing the same sky for years, acting as Earth's cosmic security cameras. Their mission was simple, catch anything that moves. But when their software flagged this particular intruder, it wasn't just moving, it was screaming across space with a velocity that should be impossible for anything born inside our solar system. The reading hit astronomers like a lightning strike. 58 kilometers per second relative to the sun, proof that this object had not been forged here, but had been drifting through the dark gulf between stars for perhaps millions of years. Before slipping into our cosmic neighborhood, nothing born within our solar system should ever move this fast. Not unless a giant like Jupiter hurled it outward with a gravitational slingshot. But this intruder wasn't leaving. It was arriving. Its hyperbolic path revealed a haunting truth. It came from elsewhere, from distances so vast they strained the imagination. The numbers themselves felt like a cosmic joke. Three Eye Atlas approached within just five degrees of the ecliptic plane. Odds of that alignment, roughly two in a thousand. Then, as if following a predetermined script, it lined itself up with sequential planetary flybys, Mars, Venus, Jupiter. The combined probability of that choreography, less than one in 20,000. These are not the statistics of chance. Random debris doesn't move with such precision, as if guided by some hidden purpose. And then came the data from James Webb, a chemical analysis that stunned the field. Carbon dioxide levels eight times higher than water. That ratio placed it a full four standard deviations outside every comet ever recorded. But the true shock wasn't just the chemistry, it was the distribution. The CO2 wasn't scattered randomly across the surface. It was concentrated on the sunward face, exactly where an impossible glowing bloom had been detected. This wasn't chaos, it was design. And here's the rule it broke. For every comet in recorded history, from ancient Chinese astronomers to modern space probes, the tail always streams away from the sun. Solar radiation pushes dust and gas outward, creating those elegant arcs across the heavens. That law has held true for thousands of years, until now. Because 3 Eye Atlas looked at the rule book of physics, and treated it as nothing more than a suggestion. By late July, Hubble's watchful eye caught something that left even the most hardened astronomers frozen in disbelief. Instead of a delicate tail drifting away from the sun like strands of cosmic hair caught in the solar wind, 3 Eye Atlas defied nature itself. It wasn't retreating from the star's fury. It was pushing material directly toward it. Not a faint blur, not a trick of faulty data, but a sharp focused beam of particles that held its line against the sun's relentless radiation, as though fighting the very laws of physics. At first, mission controllers assumed the impossible had to be an error. Perhaps the telescope's guidance had slipped, or the images had been corrupted in transmission. But this was Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3, a veteran instrument that had delivered flawless comet captures for years. Dozens of icy wanderers had been documented through its lens, each one showing the familiar anti-sunward tale every student of astronomy learns about in grade school. And yet, frame after frame revealed the same impossible sight. A narrow jet launched from the object's core, stretching straight toward the sun and holding its integrity across days of observation, like a phenomenon under precise, unseen control. Technicians at the Space Telescope Science Institute threw everything at the problem. They rechecked calibration. They verified pointing accuracy. 
They overlaid the data against previous comet images using identical settings. Every single test confirmed the same result. There was no glitch, no malfunction, no processing error. This was no illusion. 3i Atlas was a real object, behaving in ways that tore holes through the very fabric of what physicists thought they knew about motion in space. The technical teams exhausted every trick in the book. They ran simulation after simulation, altering particle sizes, adjusting velocities, twisting the parameters of the solar wind itself. Yet every attempt ended the same way. Failure. The models that had faithfully described comet behavior for decades collapsed in the face of this mystery. The only way to force the numbers to line up was to assume something was actively launching material outward, with enough force to overpower the sun's own radiation pressure. That single conclusion carried implications that no scientist wanted to voice aloud. The problem grew into a nightmare. Teams across the globe tried to reverse engineer what the telescopes were showing them, feeding observational data into dust dynamics codes that had always worked flawlessly. Instead, the computers spat out chaos. Equations diverged, physics engines stalled, error messages flooded screens. No matter how much they bent the rules, even when they assumed particles denser than anything ever found in a comet, the models refused to cooperate. It was as though forces existed that shouldn't, forces no textbook had ever prepared them for. Meanwhile, a flood of astrometric data poured in from observatories worldwide. Slowly, the pattern began to reveal itself, not in a sudden flash, but in the careful accumulation of measurements, like an image developing in the darkroom chemicals. Teams at Lowell Observatory and Gemini South logged hundreds of positional readings, applying the same proven techniques that had mapped countless asteroids and comets. At first, the orbital solution seemed routine, a hyperbolic path, and eccentricity greater than six, textbook signs of an interstellar visitor. Nothing unusual. Astrometry, after all, is supposed to be the dull side of comet science. Measure where an object is, plug it into century-old equations, and get a prediction of where it will be tomorrow. For generations, the math has been ironclad, refined through thousands of missions until it worked like clockwork. But then the clock broke. As data from observatories rolled in, experienced teams began getting consistent results that refused to fit the models. It wasn't human error. It was the cosmos itself misbehaving. The Lowell Observatory's 4.3-meter Discovery Telescope became one of the frontline trackers, its advanced imaging system able to lock onto 3i Atlas with surgical accuracy, down to fractions of an arc second. Even as it streaked across the sky, night after night, its operators captured measurements with uncanny precision, feeding them into a growing international network of observers, each trying to pin down how this mysterious object was threading its way through our solar system. Then came the residuals, those tiny gaps between prediction and reality. Normally, they cancel out as noise, but here, they didn't fade, they stacked. Every night, the bias tilted in the same direction, always, relentlessly, toward the sun. By mid-August, denial was no longer an option. Something was applying a continuous force on 3i Atlas, subtle but measurable, roughly four times 10 to the negative seventh meters per second squared. Astronomers compared the observed positions of 3i Atlas to the theoretical paths predicted by gravity, factoring in every major body of the solar system. But the two never lined up. When reality consistently strays from the models, something else must be applying force. For comets, that something is usually gas escaping as ice is sublimate in sunlight. But here, the force was wrong. It pointed in the opposite direction, and worse, it operated with a precision so mechanical, so steady, it sent chills through every calculation. The thrust may sound tiny, but in celestial mechanics, even the smallest nudge compounds. This continuous acceleration shifted 3i Atlas by thousands of kilometers in just weeks. And the alignment? Perfect. Every ounce of force lined up with the sunward plume captured in optical images, as though whatever was producing that eerie glow was directly tied to the object's altered orbit. When specialists tried to crunch the numbers, the requirements became staggering. To generate the observed acceleration through ordinary ice sublimation would demand mass loss rates hundreds of times higher than what the comet's brightness actually revealed. Even factoring in the bizarre carbon dioxide anomaly detected by James Webb, the math broke apart. The conclusion was inescapable. Natural outgassing could not account for both the magnitude and the precision of the thrust. That's when NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory quietly flagged 3i Atlas for non-gravitational monitoring a protocol usually reserved for volatile comets prone to sudden outbursts. Yet, this wasn't chaotic. It was steady, controlled. 
Behind closed doors, internal memos stopped calling it outgassing. They gave it a new name, a phrase that carried weight and unease in equal measure, a propulsive signature. On paper, the report stayed calm, wrapped in neutral language about non-gravitational perturbations. But the truth underneath was undeniable. The measurement uncertainty had collapsed to razor-thin margins, eliminating the possibility of systematic error. And with multiple observatories confirming identical results, instrumentation failure was off the table. What remained was evidence, and evidence changes everything. Then came the blow from the James Webb Space Telescope. Its spectroscopic scan uncovered chemistry so alien, it forced scientists to rethink what normal even means for comets in our galaxy. The ratio of carbon dioxide to water, eight to one, that figure slammed 3i Atlas a full four standard deviations outside the known range of every comet ever examined by human technology. This wasn't just unusual, it was unprecedented. A chemical fingerprint absent from the entire frozen archive of our solar system. When Webb locked its near-infrared spectrograph onto the object in August, researchers expected the usual suspects. Water vapor, traces of carbon monoxide, maybe a scattering of organic compounds preserved for millions of years in ancient ice. Instead, the data feed stunned them. Team members refused to believe it at first, double-checking calibrations, rerunning pipelines, verifying every step before finally admitting the truth. The numbers were solid. Webb's spectrograph acts like a cosmic fingerprint scanner, breaking starlight into precise wavelengths to reveal the hidden chemistry of distant objects. For comets, it usually sketches a familiar pattern. Water dominant, carbon minor, everything else a faint whisper. But 3i Atlas shattered the mold. Its carbon dioxide signature didn't just appear. It roared through the spectrum, drowning out every other chemical line until it was the only voice left speaking. Martin Cord's team confirmed the shocking results with their own near-infrared analysis when 3i Atlas was still 3.3 astronomical units from the Sun. The data were unambiguous. A carbon dioxide absorption line at 4.3 microns, so dominant it crushed every other feature in the spectrum. The readings resembled nothing in any astronomical database. Even carbon monoxide, normally abundant in frozen wanderers from the outer dark, barely registered only 1.4 times the water content. Extracting these signals wasn't simple. Unlike blazing stars or galaxies that drown detectors with light, comets whisper. Their photons arrive in faint trickles, demanding long exposures and painstaking background subtraction before the spectral fingerprints can be teased from the noise. Webb's team spent hours gathering light from 3i Atlas, stacking every photon until the ratios emerged with unshakable statistical confidence. What they found wasn't just numbers, it was history written in frozen gas. The carbon dioxide wasn't spread evenly. It concentrated on the sunward face of the nucleus, the very spot where that impossible plume erupted. This wasn't coincidence. The alien chemistry was bound directly to the object's law-breaking behavior. Whatever force was shaping its tail wasn't natural sublimation. It was something stranger, something foreign to our corner of the galaxy. Then the spatial mapping revealed a deeper twist. Instead of gases dispersing evenly from the heated side, as physics demands, the carbon dioxide was streaming directionally, preferentially aimed toward the sun. This wasn't thermal evaporation, it was a pattern, deliberate and selective, as though the object were choosing where and how to vent its gases. The mystery deepened when isotopic measurements were added to the mix. By analyzing the delicate ratios of carbon-12 to carbon-13 in the infrared spectrum, scientists found something astonishing. The ratios matched Earth's composition with uncanny precision, suggesting 3i Atlas formed around a star chemically similar to our own sun. And yet, its overall makeup remained utterly alien to anything in the solar system. This pointed to a haunting conclusion. 3. I Atlas may have been born in a planetary nursery like our own, under familiar starlight, but subjected to a radically different history of thermal and chemical processing. Pulling off this isotopic analysis was no ordinary task. Detecting the faint spectral lines of carbon-13 molecules requires extraordinary resolution and sensitivity, since they sit just slightly offset from the dominant carbon-12 signatures. That James Webb could measure these lines at all speaks volumes about its power and about the unusual brightness of 3i Atlas's carbon dioxide emissions. But the chemistry wasn't just a curiosity, it was tied directly to the object's motion. The plume that baffled astronomers soon drew the attention of an unexpected audience, spacecraft engineers. When propulsion specialists at NASA studied the plume's characteristics, the comparisons made them uneasy. They saw uncomfortable echoes of technology they knew all too well. Ion drives, 
These engines designed for interplanetary missions accelerate charged particles through electromagnetic fields, creating narrow beams of exhaust that stay coherent across the vacuum of space. The thrust they provide is subtle but relentless, enough to shift a spacecraft's velocity by thousands of miles per hour over months of steady operation. The engineers who build these propulsion systems know their exhaust signatures better than anyone on Earth. They devote entire careers to perfecting the physics of turning electricity into thrust, creating beams of particles so finely tuned they can push spacecraft across billions of miles with accuracy measured to the meter. So, when these same specialists looked at the images of 3i Atlas, the similarities were impossible to dismiss and profoundly unsettling. Modern ion engines strip electrons from xenon gas, then hurl the resulting charged particles through electric fields at tens of thousands of volts. The process creates a ghostly blue glow and a whisper-quiet thrust that can operate for months on end without exhausting its fuel. Unlike chemical rockets that roar for minutes and fall silent, ion drives whisper with relentless persistence, slowly bending trajectories with surgical precision. And their signatures are unmistakable. Engineers can spot them instantly, exhaust particles accelerated to near-identical velocities, forming narrow, coherent beams that refuse to scatter in space. The plumes hold their shape across vast distances, always pointing opposite the desired direction of travel. Timing, too, is everything. Mission planners fire engines at precise points in orbit, stacking the effects with gravitational assists to squeeze every ounce of efficiency from the maneuver. Now, compare that operational logic to 3i Atlas, its plume held steady, directional, sunward, a perfect counterforce to its motion, altering its orbit in ways no natural outgassing should ever allow. This wasn't just a visual resemblance. The physics itself aligned. Every characteristic that defines electric propulsion seemed to echo in the behavior of this so-called comet. And for the engineers, the realization struck cold. 3i Atlas wasn't simply imitating propulsion. It was acting as though it had one. For the effect to work, the exhaust must be narrow and persistent, the particles must move with uniform velocity, and the direction must remain constant over long stretches of time. And that's exactly what the observational data revealed. 3i Atlas wasn't shedding gas chaotically like a comet should. It was jetting material in tight, disciplined streams, holding their shape across weeks of observations. The particles moved with uncanny uniformity, leaving dense trails that seemed to resist the solar wind itself exactly the way ionized exhaust behaves when expelled from a spacecraft. But the most unnerving clue was the directionality. The plume consistently pointed toward the sun during its approach, precisely the orientation you'd expect for a deceleration maneuver. Then came the timing. Spacecraft engineers found this detail especially chilling. If you were navigating through interstellar space and needed to slow down efficiently upon reaching a new star system, you wouldn't just fire randomly. You'd time your burns for maximum effect stacking them with gravitational assists. This is the essence of the Oberth effect, a principle first described by German physicist Hermann Oberth. By firing engines when moving fastest near a massive body, the efficiency of your maneuver multiplies, squeezing the greatest possible deceleration from every particle of exhaust. And that is what 3i Atlas appeared to be doing. So, was this merely coincidence? A comet breaking every law of physics by accident? Or was this something far more deliberate? A visitor using the mathematics of spaceflight we thought belonged only to us. That's it for today. Let us know in the comments what you think about these latest revelations on 3i Atlas. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dive investigations into the mysteries of the universe. See you in the next one.